Okay, hey, welcome to another episode of On the Wrist from Off the Cuff. Actually, today we have a very fun review for you from the brand D1 Milano. A little bit about them. They were founded back in 2013 out of Milan, Italy, and currently have offices in Dubai and Hong Kong, as well as being distributed in 28 countries uh, in hundreds of stores. There's definitely have been a clear Gerald Genta steel sports inspired design aesthetic without being, of course, any direct homages to specific model references uh, that kind of underlying design has been there and it's very handsome so there's a reason why they are so widespread um, in terms of the type of watch I consider this an everyday watch some key common characteristics and design language when you're looking for something that can be worn every day it's really just gonna be all about that versatile blend of both sporty and dressy attributes this is their square model which is a new release and it is inspired by the past while being made for the future it's directly been inspired by the vintage world uh, classic and iconic features are combined with you know kind Kind of young and modern details to create a unique uh, addition to their collections the square shape now this particular model is sold out at the time of me recording this but you can of course opt in by adding your email address and updating on the site so you can be notified when it does come back into stock it, this goes for 365 direct from the brand and it is really cool um, I'm really not huge into quartz watches but uh, thanks to them leaving the um, seconds hand off of the dial of course you don't get the ticking so somehow like uh, Cartier it, it kind of can get away with it so uh, also one thing to mention there uh, is that at the time of filming this of course it's during this kind of cool collaboration that they're doing with Super Snake and uh, so I got a little bit of a sad meal instead of a happy meal uh, to go along with this watch uh, which I really enjoy the theme and it's really just all about making collecting watches fun again which I think is definitely a sentiment that should be shared so with that said let's go ahead zoom the camera out get this piece in hand and take a closer look okay guys so let's go ahead and make sure we get a good look at this piece because it's it is a looker and because of that dial I'm pretty sure during the intro it might have washed out the logo a bit but you can see very very nice let me give it a quick little spritz here I really do like the play of blue over steel it's just a very very nice look and there's a lot of fine texturing that happens and you can see a lot of it depending on the lighting is going to play in a lot of fun different ways uh, so this goes for again at 365 direct it has a 37 millimeter diameter is only six and a half millimeters thick so it's very very thin 43.3 millimeters lug to lug although that first end link does of course carry off quite a bit beyond the end of the case uh, but just from here to here not counting that first end link of course is going to be 43 um, it is all stainless steel fully brushed and it does have a sapphire crystal with AR coating so you're still going to have that great durability um, and this is just a really good looking watch it's really well executed and that's something that I've really become accustomed to from whenever I handle D1 watches they're actually really nicely done of course they're definitely more on the fashionable side but I will say that they are constructed really well and the fit and finish the tolerances the level of design is has always been quite admirable and I think this one is no different but before we jump into that let's just take a look at you know some of the accessories that came with it in this cool little uh, box here of course reminiscent of the McDonald's Happy Meal box uh, except it being a Happy Meal uh, this is going to be the D1 Super Snake uh, Sad Meal. Uh, and we can just kind of put the stuff back in as we go. So we uh, we received this cool Make Watches Fun Again cap, which I think my, uh, my younger son will probably end up wearing uh, just because he's just, he's a hat guy. He has long curly hair and he's all about his baseball caps. Uh, getting into the next feature uh, is... Guys, check it out. A bar of gold, solid gold at that. 
so clearly uh, I'm being paid for this review and anybody else who receives one of these you guys are all being paid off as well uh, even got a black card guys this thing is uh, you know good to go ready to spend and of course it will self-destruct unless I post this with a cute Instagram filter and it's all about again making watches fun which I think is very very cool and then boom you got you got to have your wad of cash of course so very nice again it pays to be on YouTube but anybody who gets any of these items uh, during this promotion will also get of course a very fun little addition to the watch itself that they will be enjoying but now that the fun's out of the way hey it's again making watches fun and this is one of those things it's not pretentious it's you know this is actually just a really nice looking watch uh and it wears really well guys uh so let's get into some of the details um push pull crown vertically brushed fixed bezel there everything flows the inside here although you can't see it the movement is a quartz miota 1l22 i don't know much about that movement because i'm not hugely into quartz typically if i do like quartz it's going to be mecha quartz chronograph or solar uh quartz um so or you know high accuracy quartz which is also nice um so don't know much about that my apologies but if you do definitely let me know down in the comments below getting it to the dial itself you have some nice applied indices that have been blued uh of course brushed and engraved silver dial with multiple finishes on there in terms of kind of uh being carved and being circular brushed and uh, there's no loom you do have blued hands as well and you know in terms of the blue if they're heat blued versus anodized you know I can't tell the difference so however they did them they did a really nice job because it doesn't look clumpy or anything like that like they would be coated um, this these look like they're thermally blued but you know I don't know for sure uh, in terms of water resistance you're getting five atmospheres or 50 meters which isn't too shabby uh, especially for something that's like this right that's really this is not meant to be a sports watch it is quite sporty um, but it's not a sports watch the lugs are integrated but they do have a 19 millimeter lug width if you look on the back side of course the front the way that this flows you're not really going to want to take this off of the bracelet but i think it's a really cool look and honestly um you know it does have some hints of cartier to it um which you if you guys have been paying attention to kind of trends cartier had a huge year last year and they're really uh, moving up in terms of their desirability and collectability so i think this is pretty cool um you know does it still have kind of that porthole genta thing going on with the integrated bracelet yeah it does and then it kind of injects also some square designs from you know one of the leading manufacturers of square style watches which would be cartier uh you do get a really nice dramatic taper from 23.3 down to 15 and a half millimeters um, on this bracelet so very very comfortable and you can see really short links very well articulated the links are you know they are they look like three links but they're really single y links uh if you take a look here um, and they are very, very comfortable to wear. The connectors on here are just push pins, so those friction pins that you would expect. And then uh, if you pop this clasp open, it is hidden and it is friction, so there's no buttons. You just kind of pull it out, but it does have a piece over with, of course, the emblem with the signed badge there so that you can have it, you know, close and click and have a very clean uh kind of termination there so really nicely integrated and it's not going to come loose or anything like that uh, beautifully articulated again and very collapsible it lays flat and that's something that you don't always get with these integrated bracelet designs where they can actually kind of lay on themselves sometimes they'll have a lot of structure in them and like you lay it down and it'll be standing up like this uh, it is very nice that this one does you know articulate fully as you can see so with that said let's actually get it on the wrist and see how it wears
Okay guys, as you can see on my seven and a half inch wrist, this wears actually quite beautifully. Look at the light play on there. Look how thin this thing lays. It just has a certain, uh, a certain just aesthetic to it and a look that is just, it just wraps around the wrist really beautifully. I'd say this angle really gives me kind of a Cartier vibe to it. Um, and it looks really good. I will say that, of course, maybe my preference would have been for it to not taper quite as dramatically just because I have a larger wrist. But I will say on camera, it doesn't seem too small. I personally, if there's no, uh, you know, sport clasp, I would like it to probably taper to 18 millimeters versus, you know, down into even smaller than 16 at about 15 and a half. Um, but that's just personal preference because I have a larger wrist. And you can see if I get the, you know, watch very close to the camera there, you're going to get some lens distortion. Um, but it still doesn't really seem oversized. But what I'll do is I'll keep my hand nice and low and then just kind of tighten the frame up so you guys can get a detailed look while getting a truer aspect ratio of how this might lay on your own wrist. And you can see it's very nicely centered, super sleek and slim. And really well finished. Again, this isn't some you know luxury finish, but man, do they do a good job of you know really making you kind of feel that it just it 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 evokes that luxurious nature for a lot less, right? Three sixty five. Some of you might say that's a lot for a um, a quartz watch. But when you look at the quality of the case finishing, you look at the quality of the bracelet, the execution, it's hard to kind of argue with this, especially considering that they're currently sold out. So clearly they're not overpriced. <laughs> so if they were, they would be, you know, kind of uh, sitting in a lot of inventory. So uh, that's just definitely, you know, it just depends on your own personal preferences there. But this thing looks absolutely great and wears really nicely on the wrist. So with that said, Let's go ahead and get this off the wrist, set up for some loom shots, low light transition, and closing thoughts. Okay, now I did say loom shots, <laughs> but there is no loom shot. Low light transition it is. Uh, so no loom, but one thing I always, of course, like to work in is low light transition because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're going to find yourself coming in and out of buildings, walking underneath overhangs, or just hanging out underneath the shade of a tree. So it's nice to see what these colors, textures, and finishes render like in less than optimal lighting to maybe even include some harsh lighting, which might expose any types of production defects. But you can see it's just a whole lot of beautiful flowing satin with the light just, you know, very nice and uniformly gliding over the brushing there whether it be playing off of those highly articulated shorter links or the actual dial and bezel. Look at the way they just capture the light and play with it. Very, very impressive. And again, still quite legible even in very low light. Check this out. The camera is even still focused on it. Uh, I'm sure you'd be able to see it with your naked eye pretty well in this type of lighting situation. But the fact that the camera can focus on it is quite impressive. And it just goes to show that uh, the design layout does help having that high contrast there. Very, very handsome. And again, not necessarily the, my bread and butter in terms of the type of watches I wear, but I can appreciate this one. This is a good looking piece. And if I saw it on somebody's wrist, I would check it out. I'd look at it because it is a good looking piece. So for me guys, closing thoughts on the wrist, great size and wrap around uh, your wrist. Of course, I think I would have preferred the taper to kind of only go down to 18 millimeters. But again, that's just personal preference with my larger wrist. Um, you know, and that's really just has to do with the clasp being hidden. If it had a traditional sports clasp, I think 16 millimeter taper would have been nice. And then, of course, typically the buckle that it would be plugging it that it would plug into would probably be closer to 18 millimeters, which is is a nice size underneath the wrist. Not too big, not too small. Uh, that's just kind of my own personal Goldilocks range. Um, and then, in terms of comparable models. Quartz fashion oriented watches, again, aren't really my specialty, but let me know down in the comments uh, if there are any that you think are a direct competitor to this uh, in terms of anything jumping out, you know, like, hey, this would 
would be a really good comparative to X other watch, right? Uh, for me, not too many. Um, and that probably bodes well for this review because this is, for me, something kind of cool and different. Uh, so for me guys, bottom line, D1 is definitely an interesting brand since they have a lot of crossover between both enthusiasts and casual consumers alike. Uh, while this watch might not feel like a great deal in terms of kind of the value proposition at 365, um, you know, they do seem to be selling out of various styles regularly. So you know, it would seem that they're priced right for their market and maybe you're not part of their main demographic and that's fine. Um, so getting into kind of my last little tidbit, I, you know, I really like this one. It wears well, it looks great and for not a lot of money, um, you know, the lack of the seconds hand definitely was a smart choice and it helps me kind of forget that it is quartz and it is a good looking watch. Again, it, it comes down to it. It's you know, well-made. It doesn't seem cheap. Uh, it, it feels more expensive than it is. And that's something and a quality that regardless of price, I mean, even if when some, when you're spending 10 grand on a watch, um, for it to feel more expensive than it is, is very important, right? Um, because you feel like you got a deal. And honestly, when you handle this one, uh, even though, yeah, 365 is probably pretty normal for kind of a nice department store, you know, a mall type of watch uh, that you'd find in a, a retailer, right? Um, but this one, again, they play and they kind of dip their toes within that enthusiast market with their designs. Uh, so I think that's really cool and it's something different. Um, and yeah, I like to mix things up and I like that they like to mix things up by sending out the sad meal. I thought that was hilarious. Uh, my kids are, you know, waiting to see who's going to get the gold bar. So with that said, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like the video, please do it like, and if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks guys.